Hey, what's up guys on Patreon? This is 3D Bonfire finally back with an amazing tutorial, all right? And of course, there is something special. I already teased it a little bit, but now is the right time. So I made a 77 seconds long animation. I would almost call it a short movie because it has uh, some storytelling involved, all right? And finally, I want to share it with you. And the special thing is I want to share content on how to create your own big project or short movie all right so this training is really ambitious so mona and the oracle this is the animation and i would love it if you would just take 77 seconds of your time and just watch the video now and after it there will be a 20 minutes long lesson on a special particle effect out of the animation but of course if you want to have the whole training this training is the right for you so let's watch the animation all right i'm super happy to share it with you We should talk about this beautiful particle explosion. So let me just play the clip from this point. You can see the mouse cursor is going on the logo and you get this beautiful gooey sticky explosion. All right. So check this one out. I think it's a pretty nice effect and I guess you are curious how I did it. All right. So let me just go over to After Effects and just dissect it a little bit here before we go into Cinema 4D, of course. All right, I just made a little bit more screen estate here for our viewer. And here you can see this seems to be a layered effect of different image sequences with particles. All right, so let's just check this one. All right, okay. So you can see this one is mixed up out of different components. And let me just want to see it one more time here. You can see all of these layers together, they give a reasonably dense explosion here and then i just combine it with some peeling and tearing off effect of these logos on the desktop and of course it is combined with some really clever placed keyframes here for example this taskbar just disappears here all right i think you know how to set keyframes right but um, if you do everything correct then you get the impression of hey this is a desktop with my mouse indicator and i press on this button but then oh man i get sucked into this other dimension here all right so just combine all of these elements and you get something really crazy okay but for now we want to talk about this green gooey sticky explosion okay and as i already showed you there are different layers for example this one is just with small particles let's just play it back i would say this one is just a little detail layer with some extra fine particles okay let's see this one okay this one is more like these um, sticky thing which collides with the walls and then it is falling down all right so you can see there we have some really nice collisions with the room but then because this one is bending around this corner this one will get punched back and then it is falling down all right so really nice let's combine it with another layer of the sticky particles it gets more complex okay of course you could do all of this maybe in one system in x particles but i prefer to mix these effects up and then i just have more room to play with how intense i want to have this effect all right so now i can say this is too much okay and then i just subdivide maybe these ones okay so when i show all and get rid of these ones now we have a more subtle explosion a little bit weak 
All right, you could do that, but you have the freedom to take these ones back and now you have a really intense explosion. And if this is not enough, then you just mix it with another layer of particles, all right? And I think the blending mode here should be something like Brighton. Okay, this is German Aufhellen, but I think this should be Brighton. Uh, it's add and then this one, okay? If I put it to add, then this will get really intense. So just put it to add uh, to <laughs> Brighton, all right? And then you can mix these ones together, all right? So now let's hop into Cinema 4D and let's see how we build these different systems and then we can mix them together in After Effects. All right, guys, finally in Cinema 4D and you can see this one is Shot 05 Dimension 22 blah, 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 01. And I think there are other versions from 01 to 05 and each of them has a different X particle setup so I can combine them in After Effects, all right? So sometimes I like to just build one system here with a gravity, some parameters which you can't change. And then I like to render this one out. Then I want to change it subtle or extremely, okay. And then you can use these ones as layers in After Effects and just combine them and stack them on top of each other, all right? So that's what I did here. But maybe before we talk about the X particle system, uh, the setup here, just a little note about the naming convention here, all right? So later in this training, we will talk about naming conventions. I just wanted to say you can do this one better okay so for example shot 05 the mansion 22 overall this is really um, descriptive and too long for example you can get rid of the 22 without losing any of the information of it okay so just a minor thing here and later we will talk about how to be really professional with it and i guess i learned also something in the making of this project how to be more professional and more precise all right and just make your life easier okay so uh, just a little note here, but now I think we can talk about the particle effect. All right, so just let me play back this one. Okay, so you can see this version one uh, has a medium power, I would say, so it is not too intense. Let me just check the other one, the second one. This one is a little bit more powerful and is coming in an angle here, so you get a cool collision with the wall, I guess. All right, so a little bit different. Let's check the third one. This one seems to be more powerful. All right, so this one is really strong. And then it collides with the walls again. And I think this will be nice in combination with the previous two versions. Let's check the third one, the fourth one, sorry. All right, these are the small particles and the fifth one. Oh, more of the small particles. I guess these ones are even smaller, all right? So let's just start with the first one and let's see how I built this one. All right, and before we go to build this one from scratch, let me just go through the setup here to explain it. So let's just go through it by order here. So of course this one is cached, all right? So this gives me a smooth playback here. Otherwise this would have to re-simulate all the time. So this one is the cache. This one is a null called Collider. And inside of it, let me just uh, solo this one, make it visible. You can see I built some proxy geometry, really low poly stuff here. And this one is acting as a collider for your X particles, all right? So you can see there is a null and inside of it, all of these elements, they basically have a X particles collider tag on it, all right? And by the way, if you want to change your particles interaction behavior here so when the particles collide with your surface you could change the bounce or the friction or the scatter to get different behavior right so make it really bouncy if you think that's funny you can do that all right so let's get out of this one okay here I have some uh, particles which will be our render particles okay basically these ones are just null objects not null objects sphere objects with a radius of 0 0.3 this depends of course on your scene scale what is the right value here and they have different materials on it this one is material 10 5 2 and 0 0.5 this one is uh, correlating with the naming here okay and the number of the material the name depends on the power of the emission okay so this one has a power of 10 okay and this one is 5 and so on okay these are my particles and i guess on our emitter on the octane object tag under particle rendering you just put them here and then the x particles from the simulation will be replaced in rendering with these spheres 
Okay, perfect. So now we come to the X particle setup. We use constraints to give them this sticky behavior. Without it, should I kill it? Okay, let's get rid of the cache. You can see without it. Oh, uh, it's still active, of course. So let's uncheck this one. Now this will look totally different. More like something that you will expect from particles which are not connected to the neighbor. So this one is uh, looking totally different but if you put constraints in it this one is i guess the main recipe of this sticky um, particle explosion all right so you get something like this okay and of course how this pattern is looking like heavily depends on how the particles are emitted okay so i just go out of my camera let's see go here and you can see behind this plane which is just a placeholder for our logo for the app which is exploding um, I think I can make this one invisible so you can see our emitter is circular all right and that's why when you emit particles you get these beautiful rings all right and of course you won't get these turbulent rings if you wouldn't have turbulence in your mix okay so without it you get rings like this one okay which is also cool but oh, I'm in the wall. Let's go through it. But if you put some turbulence inside the mix, then you get something that looks really cool. Okay, some really nice shape here. Okay, of course, you could mix it with wind. So this is just to your liking what your scene needs. So let's see when I activate the wind. Okay, then I can pretend like this impulse of particles is uh, going upwards. Okay. So give it some direction, then it bounces from the ceiling and then it will fall down. That's also nice. So you can mix a wind inside of your mix here. Uh, put, a, <laughs> put a wind inside of the, of the mix of your system. Let's see when the wind is going there. You can give it a more forward direction, which is also interesting. Then it will hit the wall and will slide down. Okay, really nice. Okay, so you can see this is the wind. This is the constraint and by the way if i go into the constraints then i think this one will be connected by distance right okay so connection this one is how i set it up let's see when i put this one to a weight of 10 only then i think the effect should be not so strong let's see it all right so this is with 10 this is with 100 i think it will look the same oh, more or less not totally sure about it. Let's see what we also could change here. I think when I put it to zero, then the effect should be zero. Okay, let's put it to one. I just want to double check it. Okay, for me, it seems like this effect is already as strong as with 100. I want to see this shape again. Let's just check it if it will look the same. Uh, more or less okay so it seems like uh, this is not doing so much here the connection limit i guess this is how many particles in the radius of 40 will be connected to each other so let's try one now this one shouldn't be that well connected all right so you can see when i put this one to two okay not a good effect put it to three a little bit more so we get these ones these lines um, what we really want to have in our effect put it back to 10 now you can see this is really intense like i had it in my rendering but you could also go to five have it a little bit more broken up here and there so that could also look really nice i think maybe this is even better no it's not better but it's also cool okay so just play with this one maybe let's see when i put it to 50 now all right so um i guess this is too much so now they will be connected also from left to right and this will just ruin the beautiful movement beautiful movement okay so put it back to 10 and i think this is the magic number for me of course you can also play with the radius so just be uh sure how your scene is scaled okay so what does 40 centimeters really mean here uh, maybe this distance here maybe i don't just talk about it but let's just put a cube inside of our scene and put it over here let's just see okay so this is 40 let's go back into our camera 
Okay, so this is the distance of 40 and this is the radius where the connections are made. Okay, so that seems to be um, a good value. I don't know. When I put it to 10, I guess, then the radius will be uh, too small to make 10 connections, but you can also try this one. Let's see what result we will get. Okay, slightly different. Don't know if the difference is uh, that high. That was unintentional. The weight change. Let's see. Okay, more or less, this looks the same. So just play with it. But if you find something that looks good, just be happy about it and don't be too mathematical about it. Okay, so let's see the stiffness. Now, let's see when I put this one to 10, how will it look? Okay, so I really like this one. But it seems like the stiffness will act like a parameter to hold it more together. Okay, so just play with these values. Sometimes I don't really know exactly what they are doing. Then I just play with it until I get something that I really like. And yes, you can see this one will be more stiff because it's more connected. And when I go lower with it, put it to 40, now it will be more loose. And I guess you can achieve this more loose effect by changing different parameters here. So you can go lower with the stiffness, but you can also decrease the connection limit or do both, for example. We can talk about all of these different options here. So this is such a versatile modifier, but we really don't need all of these options in that case. We can talk about it more in depth in another tutorial, but for now, let's just say these are the parameters that we need to change and we are happy with it, all right? Now let's talk about the XP drag. And basically this effect simulates like a volume uh, in your scene, like your particles living in a volume of water, for example, but only a 15% strong water, if this is a, <laughs> if the sentence makes any sense. So the, the effect, the drag of the water is reduced to only 15%, all right? So I think this would be responsible for the slowing down, for the loss of energy over time. So here the particles come out really strong, but then they slow down until gravity takes over and then the particles fall down, all right? So if I would put this one to 100, I think the effect will be even stronger. So you can see the loss of energy is happening over these 10 frames here and then gravity takes over and it falls down, okay? So this is really helpful to direct your uh, strength of the explosion, okay? Of course you can get rid of it and then these particles will fly further all right, but I like this effect and you can see I also played with the mapping a little bit. So the force multiplier mapped to the lifespan. Okay, so that just means this uh, percentage here will increase over the lifespan of your particles and pretty soon, so this is the complete lifespan, but pretty soon the full effect takes over um, and then drag has its effect and the particles will stop more or less and fall down. Okay, so this is just sucking energy out of your explosion. And then we have a gravity here and the gravity is set to a custom strength here and the mapping is also set to the lifespan and that just means the gravity is getting stronger over the lifespan of your particles. So initially there would be no gravity. Now gravity increases until like 60% of the particle lifespan where it reaches the maximum of gravity and then we have a lot of gravity and the particles fall down. All right, so pretty simple here. Then we mix the whole animation of the particles with some turbulence. You can't do anything in X-particles without turbulence, all right? So, so you can see we have one turbulence here with a strength of 200, but then I just keyframe this one down and here we don't have any turbulence left of this curl noise. So this just helps me to get an interesting pattern here. Without it, this will be pretty boring. All right, but with it, gorgeous. And let me just show you what happens if I get rid of the parameter here. So now, after keyframe, sorry. So now the strength is all the time at 200. And I think 
this is just too much all right so you can also see now when the particles fall down they pass through this turbulence and do their wiggly ugly motion here so that's not cool i don't like that so a good idea would be to just start with 200 and pretty soon get rid of it okay so then you get this beautiful pattern here but now turbulence is going down and you won't get this wiggly behavior okay pretty nice let's check the other turbulence this one is another noise all right so this one gives this um, uh, overall feeling here okay like this bend here and let's check it once more goes from 100 to 0 so let's see when I put this one to 500 and then back to 0 now this one will be really stretched here because the turbulence field is pretty big okay and now these ones will be stretched like crazy and I think that's too much but um, it's cool so 200 will also be fine I guess okay that's nice and if you combine it with the other turbulence you get an even more complex turbulence Okay, and I like it. So feel free to mix different turbulence modifiers to get really the precise turbulence that you like. All right, nice. And if you are wondering about these micro turbulence here, okay, so what is this? All right, and I think this is because of different speed parameters in our particles. And then when these different fast particles will be constrained together, then you just get these little wiggles here and i think this is working perfectly in conjunction with our turbulence effect okay so that's nice one last thing the xp scale here this one helps to scale our particles down over the lifespan so you can see initially they are pretty big but then they scale down and the cool thing is they also have different size parameters already here so overall there is a variation in the size and in addition to it all of them scale down and disappear okay and this is because in the scale you just go to the operation set a value of three for example for all of your particles this will override the radius by the way which you set in your x particle emission here but you can give them a custom radius with the scale effector you can see now they are pretty big but uh, put it back to three and then you just go to the mapping and give it some mapping and say the radius value will decrease over lifespan all right and this is making your particles disappear and then there is a second mapping the radius value is mapped to a user value and this one is going from 0 to 100 and when I go to my particles to the extended data um, to the custom data no to the physical data you can see I have a user value here which I put to 50 and a variation of 50 this means now all of your particles every particle will have a different user value between 0 and 100 okay so this is just putting some information in your particles and then when you go to your scale then you can say the radius value changes depending on the user value and this user value is in the range from 0 to 100 and therefore you get some different radius value okay so this will just help you to give all of them a different radius all right so sorry if I talk too much about it um, I just wanted to be really precise with it and I think now this is basically almost everything I can say in this file and maybe we should just build it shortly from scratch I don't know maybe we can do that all right let's just check the result once more okay so I just want to see that explosion again all right and I still like it okay of course what is really cool is that this uh, mouse indicator is pushed away okay so this is really funny and um if you want to see me build the explosion from scratch just hold on for the next five or six minutes but other than that if you already have all the explosion informations that you need to build this effect uh, you can already quit here sorry that i was a little bit uh, slow this time i took a little break from making tutorials but now i'm back and i will get back to speed okay so sorry for being slow i hope this um, technique will help you in your scenes thank you so much for listening see you in the next tutorial bye guys